Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Zurius and welcome to part 5 of Blockbench for Noobs. In this much requested episode we're going to be covering CEMs, which stands for Custom Entity Models. This is an Optivine feature that allows you to change the model of, as you could probably guess, entities in Minecraft. But what does that really mean and how far can you actually take this? Well, what you can do is change the 3D model of mobs. Now, there are some restrictions that come with this. The changes that you make are entirely cosmetic. There is no way to change the functionality of these mobs via this method. And given that these changes are completely cosmetic to the models, there's no way to interact with the additional model parts. For example, if you were to put a really, really long head or arm or anything on a mob and you try to hit it with a sword or shoot it with a bow, it would just pass through it because the actual hitboxes of the base mob are not affected by this. I would just like to clear that up before we get into this. This method with Optifine is purely cosmetic. So this one's going to be a bit more advanced. So what I would advise is if you have not already done it, watch episode 4 of this series. This covers mob variants and how to change their textures. This information is essential to understanding what we're about to do in this episode. There is a link up in the title card up there. I suggest you pause this, go watch that video, get a good understanding of it, come back here and then continue. Okay, so if you're all caught up, you've watched that video or you're feeling confident enough to proceed, let's jump in game and I'll show you exactly what our custom entity mob actually is. So here we are in Omniville, which is my little village that I created, although it's gotten a bit overrun with all these villagers. Wow, okay, yep, hi, let's get out of the town square. So what? the reason why we're here is we're looking for these guys, the Iron Golem. Looks pretty standard, right? Standard Iron Golem, you've seen this probably a million times. But what we want to find is a CEM variant that I've made of this. Now, obviously we don't have to go very far to find them because they've got big red cubes all over them. How did you get up there? So as you can see, rather than just the texture being changed on these guys, we have actual 3D changes that are visible without sacrificing the default versions of them. So just to wrap your head around the concept, just imagine that any variants you add to a mob will always be there on every variant of that mob, but they will be invisible depending on how you've set up the textures and UVs. Let's jump into Blockbench and I'll show you what this actually all means. So back in Blockbench, here we have our standard Iron Golem. Absolutely nothing special about this guy. Default vanilla Minecraft dude right here. We've got the default texture up here that you can see all laying out. But if I just hit Control A to select all of my cubes, Suddenly we can see a bunch of invisible cubes that are not showing up. Now the reason they're not showing up is simply because if I click on one, you'll see that the UV mapping is mapped to somewhere out here in the void where there's nothing to render. So we get these invisible boxes. So what do you think will happen when I change to my actual custom skin? Well let's do that just now and we'll see. And there we have it. All of these blocks have suddenly appeared. Why are they bright red though? Well they're bright red because that's just what I've got here in the actual texture image. So what I did was I just created all these little blocks around the sides of the golem here. I then mapped them to the UV here, which is just this big red block. So why did I have to go out of my way to change the texture file here and add this big red cube? Why could I not just drag this over here and say reuse this part that's already part of the texture? So why did I have to go out of my way to create a new part of the texture here? rather than reusing a texture that already exists. The reason for this is although we can change the texture file that's being loaded, for example this is Iron Golem 2, we cannot change the UV mapping between textures. So if I set the UV mapping here for Iron Golem 2 with the additional parts, this is part of the pre-existing texture of Iron Golem 1. So if I switch back to Iron Golem 1, you'll see that the box is now visible on the original variant, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of this. So in summary, anytime you want to make a change to the actual 3D model of a mob, you have to make sure that the 3D elements that you have created have their texture UV mapping completely unique and not shared. Now what this also means is that say I wanted to make 10 different Iron Golem models, I would have to overlap all 10 of those models within this one file. So you cannot actually switch between model files. So if I really wanted to have 10 different variants, I would have to squish them all into here. And for example, if I was working on variant 9, I would only make sure that the textures that were UV mapped were mapped to the elements that I wanted to appear for variant 9 of that model. So if I wanted to make sure that only variant 9 was visible, I would have to ensure that none of my texture mapping for the UVs on variant 9 
aligned with the texture mapping on the variants 1 to 8 or 10. Now, thankfully, in Blockbench, we do have a way of managing the differences between these variants. You'll see here that I've got all the bone parts of our golem here, body, head, left arm, right arm, etc. And if I open up these folders, I have a subfolder, head sub zero. Not exactly the most creative name, but I can just do stone golem head if I want. This does not actually affect the config file at all. This is just purely cosmetic. The only naming conventions that actually matter are the primary group names here. To explain why these names are so important, we're going to jump into an Optifine properties file. So here we have the master file for the custom entity models provided by Optifine. As always, link for this will be in the description. And what this file does is it gives you an overview of the CEMs. There's some really useful information up here that you should really, really read. Essentially, you have to make sure that you have your file named entity name.gem. In the case of mine, it's just Iron Golem and it's placed in the Assets Minecraft Optifine CEM folder of the resource pack. The entity model contains a list of entity part models. The part models can be specified inline, which is what we are doing just now, or loaded from external GPM files. Now what that means is you could essentially make a file for each limb and then combine them within a JEM file. If there's any interest in that, I can do a separate video on that, but today we're just going to be covering the inline method or the all-in-one method. If you're going to be working with custom entities, get this file, save it somewhere because you're going to be using it all the time because this information is 100% essential. Here we have a list of all the entities that could be changed with Optifine and the names of the limbs. So what we are looking for in this case is Iron Golem. You'll see it's right here. And it then tells you the exact names of all of the limbs. So if I just bring this over here a little bit, you'll see we've got head, body, left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg. You'll see that my group names match these exactly. Now, if you get to the point where you're trying to get something working in game and it's not working at all, there's a good chance that you've made a mistake here with the naming convention, because if any of these are spelled wrong or there's mistakes, the whole model will not load. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you from start to finish in Blockbench how to make a three-headed creeper. Right, so let's do this. File, new, Optifine entity. We're going to just call it Creeper. And we want the texture width to be 64 by 64. I'll show you why in a minute. We're then going to go to Filter, and we're going to do Bedrock Entity Generator. If you don't have this installed, click Plugins, and it should be under the Available tab here. Once in the Entity Generator, grab the drop down here and go to Creeper, and then click Create Entity Model. You'll then see that we've got our base creeper here. Now you're probably wondering why is it the bedrock entity creator? Well that's because these limb names are all named for the bedrock version of the game. All we have to do is change these to the right names and it'll work fine for Java. So in this instance all we have to do is update the name of the legs. So legs 1, 2, 3, 4 and the body and head are already correct. All right, we've got our texture file imported. I had to go to file and project and make sure it was set to 64 by 64. For some reason that was set to 32. Right, so now I'm just going to click on these parts and make sure it's all mapped correctly. So the normal head is up here. I'm just going to drag this UV box up to it. And the same thing for the legs, drag them over here. And the same for all the other ones. Let's make sure they're in the right place. So we've got our default looking creeper. Now you've probably noticed those two other faces at the bottom there. I wonder what those are for. So I'm just going to click on the head here and hit Control D. Drag this up, make sure it's in the right place. Perfect. I'm going to click on this and bring the UV down to this bottom head here. There we have our very sad looking creeper head. And I'm going to hit Control D again and drag it up. And you guessed it. I'm going to just drag this up here. And there we have it. We've got a three headed creeper. How simple was that? A quick tip here before we move on. You'll notice that the heads are all under the head subfolder. What this means is all of these heads are connected to, well, the head, which means their animation and connected status will stick to the original head. But you, if you wanted, you could put one of these heads in leg one, and the animation from leg one would then apply to this head here. It's probably not a good idea to attach the head to the leg to match the animation, but if you want to add additional legs or arms or other parts, it's important to know that they will match the animation of the main part that they are connected with. So now that the UV mapping has all been set, we have to do something a bit strange but essential to the process. Go down to your texture file here and delete it. So once the texture has been deleted, just go to File and Export, and then Export Optifine JEM. And then as the properties file says, we have to make sure that we put it in Minecraft Optifine CEM. And there it is. 
Another couple of quick things we need to do before we test this is, so go to your resource pack into the assets folder, Minecraft, and then in the Minecraft folder, create a new folder called textures, entity, creeper, and then put your creeper skin in here. The reason for this is we're going to overwrite the basic Minecraft creeper skin with this one. And then so that this works for random creepers, what we also have to do is go to Optifine, random, entity, creeper, and then while in this folder, you have to ensure that all of your other creeper skins that you want to be able to switch to are the same resolution as the default texture. So we've changed the default texture to 64 by 64. So all of these textures are now 64 by 64. Now you may be wondering why we've overwritten the original creeper. The reason for that is you remember from our previous episode, we have all of these creeper variants and we mentioned that creeper one is the default. So the only way to overwrite that default is by overwriting the actual Minecraft default texture rather than adding it as a variant. However, if you wanted to, you could keep the original Minecraft one as is and then maybe add Creeper 12 and make it a variant version of that and put it in here and then just update this properties file that we used last time with version 12 with the three headed Creeper and that would work. Anyway, enough talking, let's get in game and we'll see if this works. Okay, back in game and it looks like we've got a little ice creeper here. You look perfectly normal. So what I have to do is get myself to a biome where we know a normal creeper is going to spawn. I believe if I spawn one up on top of this mountain here, it should be a normal variant. Let's find out. Oh, hi there, friend. Are you the legendary three-headed creeper I've heard so much about? <laughs> there you are, guys. This is a custom entity model. A three-headed creeper. as Strange and basic as it is, it works. Now if I try and punch it in the head, you'll see nothing's really happening because these parts, as I said, don't technically exist. It's all cosmetic. But I think that went pretty well. What do you guys think? Hopefully I've explained this well. I realise that there's quite a lot of information to take in. You might have to watch the video a couple of times. If there's anything you're not sure of, just leave a comment. Let me know what I may have missed or what you want to know more about. Or probably join the Discord or get me on Twitter. Those are the best places to get a hold of me. But as always, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take the time to like and subscribe. You really should subscribe. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone, and have a good one.